what's going on guys you know what it's time and it's time to go to the brand new character tamarine i i, I oh yeah Tim, it could be tamar renee i'm not exactly a hundred percent sure but whatever the hell it is i'm i'm definitely excited to see what she does it's a soul weaver uh last soul weaver on the banner was the end if i'm not mistaken and uh destina before her so the soul weavers so far in the game have been pretty legit so i'm very excited to see what they're gonna do um, in this, you know, with another Soul Weaver in the game, not an unlimited banner. Um, so let's see what we got here. <laughs> I almost sk I skipped it. Yeah, that's funny. All right. I I'm not. Uh, and it's done, guys. She's great. <laughs> Imagine, like, me shilling that hard. Like, I just skipped to the end of the video. I'm like, she's great. She does everything you need. Spend all the pack, Buy the packs. The summon pack. You're good to go. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, all right. Serious mode. Serious mode. Kind of. An idol that brings hope and joy through her beautiful music. Better be beautiful. She has great magical talent and can harness magic with her voice. Okay, I respect it. She transforms it. her appearance on stage with the booming pendant and becomes more dynamic and lively. Oh, so she's like, she's literally a fucking Power Ranger. That's dope. And you didn't know she's like, she's like Cinderella, dude. What the fuck? Yo, she's like Cinderella. From broke to got it all. I like it. Before transformation. Shining Star. A skill that displays debuffs from allies and transforms Tamarin into an idol. I like it. Song of the Forest. A skill that recovers the health of all allies. A Serene heal. Tune. A basic attack skill that attacks an enemy while healing the ally with the lowest health. KC, is that you? <laughs> That's a nice chronicle. Climax. Oh, the... A buff skill that increases the attack and combat readiness of all allies. Uh-oh. Sing Together, a basic attack skill that dispels buffs from all enemies and triggers a dual attack. AoE buff dispel Tamarin and a dual attack. Tamarin is a soul attack. weaver that can crazy. be used to heal and buff your team. She can dispel debuffs from allies with Shining Star and transform herself to provide attack buffs at the same time. Because her skill Climax can increase the combat readiness of all allies, a powerful onslaught of attacks can ensue. Sing Together dispels buffs from all enemies and triggers a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack, making the skill highly effective against teams that rely on buffing. Damn, what a counter. <laughs> so, so I gotta see how uh, exactly they say her thing actually works. Like her, oh no, 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 we don't need to see it twice. Chill out, chill. No, no, you, you need to see this. Like, no, so let's go. Uh, and read her thing. So how does she transform? Can she just transform from the beginning? Does she? I'm assuming she transforms and gets an extra turn. That's uh. So she, so they have her and then they have idol. Like <laughs> that's kind of funny. So let's read this. Uh, Tamarine. Uh, actually, how did they say her name? How did he say her name? Miss Meow. <laughs> An idol that brings hope and joy through her beautiful music. Say her name. She has great magical talent. Do you, are you not gonna say her name? And can harness magic with her voice. That's so weird. She transforms her appearance. All right, screw you. <laughs> he probably does say it, but I'm not going to rewatch the old video. Uh, Tamarine is a... He says it somewhere. No, Tamarine is a soul weaver who can be used to heal um, and buff your team. Before she transforms herself into an idol, she can recover health on the uh, of your team with the Serene Tune and Song of the Forest. She can dispel debuffs from allies with Shining Star and transform herself to provide attack buffs at the same time because her skill climax can increase the common range of all allies a powerful onslaught of attacks is this the same like script he was reading <laughs> like what what so yeah so it's gonna be a little weird because like, when i was scrolling down this it just seemed like oh she has like oh she has extra i thought she was gonna be like the first character with four attacks like four like actual separate attacks i i didn't know she was like a soul weaver so i was like oh what all right, so attacks an enemy with a serene melee and heals an uh, ally with the lowest HP, a lowest health, similar to, you know, Destina. Um, amount recovered increases proportion to the ally's max health. That kind of sucks. Uh, it's, it is and would be better if it's tuned to her HP, because then if you have high HP, you give a fat heal. But it's, if it's tuned to the, pers the, the target's HP, it's always going to be slightly smaller. And again, it decreases the cooldown of Shining Star. I'm assuming that is the actual alt. Sing together in idol mode. I guess now this is her S1 when she is at idol. Attacks all enemies with a beautiful voice, dispelling all buffs. 
Dispelling all buffs. See, t I damn son, I'm so happy I didn't like fully invest into Roman because Roman is a really good uh, AOE debuffer, but she does this on her auto attack. Which screw, uh, if if I'm not mistaken, you know she could dual attack, like she can dual attack and then do it too. So. Now that this character exists in the game, you have to think that buffing is going to be dramatically less of a thing. Obviously, but she's, uh, I think she's fire, right? Um, so she's not like, you know, water characters are still going to be somewhat safe, but she's going to be stripping every other character pretty easily. And it also is going to force a little bit of effectiveness on your on your um, Soul Weaver, which usually a lot of Soul Weavers don't necessarily need it. Usually they just need HP, defense and speed, but now she's going to need, um, obviously she's supposed to go, but I need to see how this exactly works. So let's keep reading. Heals all allies with a powerful melody. This one is actually, uh, the model cover is to our health, which is good. Increases shining, uh, shining stars by one turn. So I don't know. Yeah, we got to see. Is this okay? Active nine, nine turns before performing, uh, before performing, it spells all debuffs inflicted on all allies and recovers the caster's health to max. The caster becomes an idol for three turns and performs a concert. Begins every battle with full cooldown count. I'm assuming what that means is, is written kind of weirdly. Uh, I'm assuming what that means is that it goes like all these, her S2 is off cooldown. I think is what they're pretty much trying to say is that, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And then the Awakening, Dispels on Kona, and Grant an extra turn. So, yeah, I'm about to say, this is garbage if you don't get an extra turn. So, you have to awaken her to get the extra turn because, yeah, you would you would imagine her not awaken, you S3, and it's like, next turn I'm going to give combat readiness, and she would be garbage. So, it is funny to think, uh, that, so yeah. So, she only gets it for three turns, and she does not have access to it when she first, you know, in the beginning... And unlike Violet, she doesn't have like a counter mechanic to get that up. She has a cooldown mechanic, which is going to bring her in line in which I hate, hate, hate um, some of these characters with like a bar. She has like kind of like a focus bar, like a, it, it might not actually show, but her thing is nine cooldown. So she actually, and you, I, 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 I promise you guys, I don't want every character to be about counter, but you do need to, um, get as much attacks in as possible or turns you know whatever way you want to get as many turns she almost i feel like needs to be on candlestick she's cool because she does not she does not subscribe <laughs> like comment and subscribe to the video guys she doesn't subscribe to the whole speed tuning it does not matter if you speed tune this unit you can't use this from what i can see you know i'm assuming it starts off of cooldown i think i'm assuming or else you just bust that in the beginning. Then at that point, you know, to be completely honest, what would be the point of even having the transformation? They should have just made her that character anyway. Like she have a double build character. That's the thing I, I guess I am slightly confused about. Does it say anything? No, it doesn't. So you, I guess you start the fight with her in rags mode. Let me read more. That's kind of weird. And as you can see here. I'm actually assuming that this is that you can use this in the beginning of the fight. Maybe she does. Maybe you can use speed because this only has plus one, and that's either gonna be it's gonna be either two things: cooldown reduction or gain more souls. That's usually what they do on moves like that. Independent and becomes more dynamic and lively. That's the only thing they don't say. Shining Star, a skill that dispels debuffs from allies and transforms Tamarin into an idol. Song of the Forest. A yeah, I, I think I think uh, almost a, now I'm, I have to rethink that because I'm assuming you're gonna be able to S3 in the beginning. They did showcase it S3, but they actually normally usually showcase the S3 first. So it does seem very weird. I'm assuming, and this is only my assumption. She's not live in the game at the moment. Um, actually, maybe she is. Let me double check. All right, doesn't seem like she's currently live in the game. That is one thing I definitely want to see. Um, even though if you go into journal, it won't really help you because in journal, everything is off cooldown. You can do everything you want. <laughs> um, so 
it is, you know, it is, it kind of would suck. But I do think, I'm assuming that her S3 is all cool. So then you can, with Awakening S3, give everyone attack and then come here. Then she does actually subscribe to that. So it's kind of, it is kind of weird. I don't like, because then her S1 and S2 are to lower the cooldown so she can get into this form a little bit quicker. Um, I guess to not have her be able to double cleanse. Because she does have a cleanse and it does suck if you have debuffs and you just blow them away and I think in the in the second form yeah in the second form yeah she actually can't heal so I guess you have to you have to balance that out a little bit right because you you can't heal when you're in idle form because in idle attacks on enemy trigger the dual attack s2 gives a uh, combat readiness and attack and that's it only when you're in regular form does she have this uh, very low cooldown heal so that's going to be up to you to really, I guess, to make that decision. Do you want to just, do you want to actually just have her sit in this mode, maybe uh, just healing? I wonder what the AI is like. The AI is probably going to be very important there as well. Because, um, yeah, she, and then this is also when she has the S1 heal as well. And then I guess when you're ready to make an onslaught or make an, like a, the, the attack onslaught, like they said, uh, then you switch her into idle mode. And then she's all about, you know, fighting, triggering dual attacks. And giving combat readiness, giving an attack buff, but before that, or even after that, obviously, because it's only you're only in this mode for three turns, then you know you're healing everyone up, you know, heal, 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 heal. That's all she can do in her in her normal form, just healing all day. But then when it's idle, it's time for the stat. It would be actually cool if they gave her in this in her um, idle form, if they gave her attack scaling, uh, her attack scaled off of uh, max HP. You know, something of that nature, which would be kind of funny to make her kind of like a, a like a soul weaver that still does DPS. But that might be too greedy. I, I'm i known for making characters overpowered in my mind. So what do you guys think? How you, you think her S3 is going to be available when she fights or she has to work towards it? It's probably going to also, you know what? It's, it's almost, I'm 90% sure that it's going to work in the same way like you, as Luna, which is so messed up to say, right? Um, it's gonna work like Luna. You get S3 and then you S1, you know, constantly or use your abilities constantly to lower it and be able to use it again, which is kind of funny. So she's like singing in the forest and then she's like, F this, it's time to go big time. <laughs> like she goes big time, she fails, or I actually wanna see how it looks when she loses her, um, she loses her idol form. That'd be funny to see, right? So she's like, big time, goes back, back. She's rag to riches, then goes riches back to rags. And then she's singing in the forest. <laughs> she's like singing everywhere. Like she's singing a tune and then she just psh, pops up back in the, hey, yo, you think I forgot? Y'all forgot about the best? That'd be funny, man. I, th I do think that she's an interesting character. Um, like I said, definitely going to be speed oriented if um, speed oriented if you can use the S3 in the beginning of the fight. That is huge. A character that gives combat readiness and attack, the only person I had known to do that was Rose. And if you have this character, you, you know, you're not going to run Rose. This is dramatically better. You have the attack buff plus combat readiness by 30%, by the way. Insane. That is actually like one of the highest combat readiness boosts I've seen on base. Usually you need upgrades to get to even 20%. You know, that's what made Rose hit so good because you need, he gave 20% base combat readiness. This person starting off with 30, it could even get higher. Imagine if that got higher. It almost makes me think again, I'm so conflicted. I'm still conflicted whether or not it's going to be uh, available. Eventually. But if, if, like I said, if this is available, you, if you can S3 immediately, then yes. Speed all the way. This is going to be super speed cleave comp. BS, um, but if not, which would actually make it a little bit more interesting, you definitely, I, I actually say you'd want to go like counter. You want to have her S1 as many times and lower the cooldown, but this would be too high of a cooldown for it to be the way that I would like it to be. This is too high. Nine, nine turns just seems like it's way too high. So I'm going to have to go with that it, it is a, uh, it is, you know, you're available when you first get it. So I, I like I'm you know I don't look at data mines and stuff like that. So if I'm wrong, I do apologize. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to give you guys two be good options, right? I'm trying to give you the if it's available option and if it's not available option. 
Of course, guys, I wanted to do this again where I give you guys artifact recommendations. Uh, some people seem to like it in my last videos with the with the, the Moonlight characters, uh, Carissa and Sez. So I'm going to do it in this video. Rod of Amaris is going to be obviously pretty good. She doesn't have, well, in her, she has pretty much her alt is a non-attack skill. Her S2, no matter what form it is, is a non-attack skill. So... This will you'll get a lot of benefit out of this. Plus her S2 is on a pretty low cooldown. So even if you're in idle form and you know buffing and stuff like that, you will heal off of that. And then when you switch back, she'll do more healing there too, which is gonna make this not that bad of a thing. I mean Rod of Ameris, uh Ameris is, is just a good artifact for any soul weaver. Shamadra's staff. Obviously, if you think about if you're really looking for her as a healer. The S2 is a AoE heal scaling off of her HP on a two turn cooldown and would be buffing that like crazy. So uh, this is obvious. If you actually want her to be like a really, really crazy healer and remember increase the effects of all healing received by an ally. So your allies will be giving this really crazy buff. This would be more of a tanky-esque Tamarine build. Like you really want her to like sit there and just soak and soak the you know soak damage and then just keep healing everyone back to full this is going to be like for your tank the tank boys the bruiser boy comps and depending on the ai it would be pretty good on defense as well celestine um has grown on me over time it is decent like because you just heal when you're attacking and you know it's just a nice thing you don't really have to worry too much about i do think that the other two i just mentioned are a little bit stronger i think celestine is a Nice to have. If you do have it, you should just use it uh, in, in place of even like some of the four star and especially the three star artifact. If you have this, just use that over that. But it is still pretty good. I've grown to like it a little bit more. But I do think, uh, I do think, you know, I think Shimada is probably the best one for her. Wondrous Potion, gonna be kind of a toss up. Uh, if you have it maxed out, it's 100% to remove debuffs um, from an ally at the beginning of, of her turn. But her idle switch mode actually takes all debuffs as well. But it's on a long cooldown. So it is a nice balance to allow you to kind of like keep constantly doing that. And then when you're in healer mode, you're still taking debuffs. And then when you switch, you take off debuffs. So you can really do well as like just keeping debuffs off your entirety of your team. I guess this this is more maybe like stage specific, you know, uh, like maybe you equip it on her for certain stuff. I don't think as an overall it's going to be bad, but if you know that, that either arena team, like if you switch artifacts per arena team, which I doubt people do, um, you can tech this on, but hey, you know, I'm, I don't want any debuffs on my characters. But I see this more as if you're going to bring her into a certain dungeon. Byron's going to be like poisoning in a... Only the person in the front, unless you have her as a front line for that. And then at the moment, you know, bringing non-water into Hunt 11 is not the greatest. So it, it, it's, it's very dependent on you. I don't think this one is that great. Magarus Tome, ladies and gentlemen, one of my all-time favorite uh, Soul Weaver artifacts. Gives you combat readiness when you're using a non-attack skill. And like I've said, she has two non-attack skills, which makes it a very high thing. And... Also, the S2 in idle form does give combat readiness, plus she'll give an extra 30 if this is maxed out, right? So she'll give herself 60, give everyone 30, which is going to give her another turn, which in idle form is OD, because then she'll actually be able to attack and enforce a dual attack. And her S1 in idle form is a AoE attack. So that's a lot of damage, plus the AoE kind of, or the, all the people that just attack. Um, before she will attack first again trigger a dual attack which if you have like Bologna woo, stop it and it's very easy to trigger who's going to come with her because she takes the highest attack person it's like I was actually thinking about doing a Raz video of like dual attack and now they're just bringing everyone that has dual attacks just making like Raz just the most worthless character in the game Water's Origin is always about the tank Soul Weaver if you want if you want to have her sit there tank it up She'll, if it does, you know, a certain amount of damage, she'll heal and get combat readiness. Um, more or less for a frontline esque, very tanky esque um, soul weaver. So it's really, you know, up to you how you want to build. Usually people have their soul weavers scrawny, fast, you know, but you do see that there are some people that build them very, very tanky, very annoying. And Water's Origin just makes that annoying just 10 times more annoying and better for the person because you just you keep giving the person combat readiness and they're automatically healing every time they take damage before the turn comes 
you already know it had to be there. The candlestick, of course, uh, lowering her cooldown, allowing her to constantly go back into idle form if you for a long extended battle, maybe like a labyrinth or a raid or something of that kind. You know, after turns keep going, she takes hits. Now she's going into idle form, cleanses everybody, healing everybody, you know, switching back and forth. That's kind of up to you. Uh, I do think that it's good, um, but I do actually think uh, for once, usually a uh, candlestick is pretty good, but I do think that some of the four and five stars are a little bit better. Uh, Envoy's Pipe is going to be another good one because as she gets lower on health, once her health goes lower than half, you can have it that she takes dramatically less damage, allowing her to actually sustain herself and start healing up everybody and start you know you know stay alive pretty much if you want her to be like that crucial i do think emily's pipe is definitely slept on especially on a squishy s character allowing them to stay alive a little bit longer than intended and then all of a sudden healing everything up and doing all the other stuff which is really good and last but not least the daydream joker to make sure you're getting that extra dps now <laughs> I do think that it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world on her. You know, this is more of a funny pick just to end the video off on. But hey, she is a Soul Weaver and it does extra damage. Like pretty much from what I can see is going to be like a flat amount based on their max at HP. So, you know, maybe just to, you know, make the fight quicker. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about her um, in the in the comments below. I'll be looking out for that. I do think she's really good, regardless of if she starts with her alt or she doesn't. But I do think that she is worth summoning for. She doesn't seem like crap. I think, you know, like I'm waiting for them to make a crap character that's like, eh, I don't know about that, Chief. So they've pretty much been good. If you're still saving for Luna, like I said, I, I don't, I think she's several months away from coming out. Maybe like, even if I were to say a month or two. So, you know, you could spend a little bit, spend a little bit there. Trying to get a really good uh, support because supports in these games are broken. Name one bad support. Like, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, you know, like, obviously not three star, but uh, it's hard to name a bad four or five star support. They're just, you know, a soul weaver. They're really good. They're always meant to just be game changing and just, even if you want to tier them, like, this one's better than that one, it doesn't matter. If you, whenever you get one, you're like, it, it improves your account, like, significantly. That's how good the Soul Weavers are. You can get so many attackers and they just do nothing for your account. They, you know, knights, nothing for your account, you know, stuff like that. It's pretty much most of the Soul Weavers you get, you're, it's an upgrade. So, getting this one, especially if you start off with the S3, is an attack buff plus... 30 combat readiness, which is literally one of the highest combat readiness that you can give AoE. Like, I think the only one is 20, and I'm saying without Mulligore investment. So, be that as it may. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and a comment. Also, if you have any lovely money to spare, you can hit up the Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.